I'm delighted uh, to be here. Uh, a beautiful day in the Shenandoah Valley. So I'm particularly flattered that all of you turned out uh, just to hear me. Uh, I want to talk uh, about today about two subjects, health and health care. And I stress that they are two subjects. Uh, they are related, but they are not exactly the same thing. Um, health, and I want, because I'm an economist, I have to raise the question, uh, can we improve both health and health care at a sustainable cost? Uh, and I think the answer to that is yes, but you have to know that I'm a congenital optimist, so I'm always hopeful uh, that uh, we can solve uh, policy problems and uh, other kinds of uh, problems. But I don't think the yes answer to my question, can we improve both at sustainable cost, is obvious or that it will be easy. I think we have to do uh, several things that are going to be quite hard if we're to uh, get yes answers to both those uh, questions. First, we're going to have to abandon the notion that there's some easy fix, that there's some one thing uh, that uh, we can do uh, that uh, will uh, make uh, everything uh, possible. And I'll come back to that in a minute. We have to get out of our ideological corners uh, we should not be saying there's a right-wing and a left-wing solution and somebody's got to win. Not so, unless we get start talking across ideological lines and realize that neither health nor health care are really uh, subjects that ought to be caught in, thank you very much, in the ideological uh, divide. They are things uh, that we all want and need, and we ought to be able to sit down together and say, how do we do the best job here? And finally, I think it's going to take shifting a lot of our attention from health care to health. Uh, and uh, that uh, will not be as easy as it sounds. At the moment, we're obsessed with health care, at least the national conversation and much of the conversation in Virginia uh, revolves around uh, health care. Uh, and particularly at the moment, uh, the divisive issue is what I choose to call the Affordable Care Act. Uh, otherwise known as Obamacare. Uh, the president himself has capitulated uh, and now uses uh, that, uh, uh, that term. I think of it a little bit like uh, I've been at the Brookings Institution for a long time and for a while people called us a think tank and we thought that's not very nice but now we talk about it all the time. We're a think tank, so what? Uh, so the, pre the Affordable Care Act has become Obamacare, uh, even in the, in the White House. Uh, but if we weren't obsessed with uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, which is after all a relatively small piece of our governmental health expenditures, we would be focusing, as we have in uh, some past uh, elections, on Medicare and Medicaid, which are much, uh, much bigger. Uh, and also uh, uh, divisive uh, issues. Uh, Health care is very expensive in the United States. Uh, we spend about 17 to 18 percent of everything we produce on health care. Think about it, that's a lot. That uh, proportion has gone uh, from uh, about 6 percent in the 1960s uh, to almost 18 percent, triple the proportion of our, uh, of our uh, income, of our national product uh, that uh, we are devoting to health care. And as we look ahead, it could easily be a good deal more. Uh, the population is aging. Uh, older people consume more health care. 
and uh, health care, uh, until quite recently, had been uh, the cost of health care per person uh, had been rising much faster than the cost of almost anything else uh, the, uh, <clears throat> over quite a long period. Of course, that's how we got from 6 to 18 uh, percent. Over quite a long period, uh, the uh, price of health care uh, was rising considerably faster than other prices. Uh, we've had a respite in that uh, recently. Uh, Health care costs are not going up as rapidly. Lots of economists are studying this. We had a couple of big conferences uh, at the Brookings Institution on why the rate of growth of health care spending had slowed. Uh, and the answer is nobody quite knows. Uh, it's uh, probably uh, partly related to uh, the slower growth of the economy and wages, uh, and it is maybe uh, related to some of the things that we are doing in the healthcare system that make healthcare uh, delivery uh, more uh, more efficient. But um, as you look ahead, you can only be nervous. Uh, there are uh, all of those people living longer, and I'm one of them, uh, and uh, the uh, avalanche of the baby boom generation is just uh, uh, on the leading edge of uh, moving into uh, the Medicare ages. Uh, so we'll have a lot more people eligible for Medicare and Medicaid um, in uh, uh, 20 years from now, or even 10 years from now, uh, than we have now. And then there is the advance of medical care. All, I, I work in an uh, atmosphere in which uh, you hear about all sorts of uh, exciting things that are uh, pot <coughs> potential uh, therapies, gene therapies, and, and other things that uh, promise uh, individualized uh, medical care that may have quite astonishing effects in curing diseases and um, uh, delaying the effects of aging and chronic uh, disease. Great. Well, yes, uh, we're all going to want it, uh, and uh, including you young folks as you get older. But um, that is very uh, new drugs and therapies and specialized individual care likely uh, to drive things up again. So. From a uh, near-term point of view and from a budgetary point of view, it is very good news that the growth in health care costs has slowed. Uh, but uh, don't hold your breath. Uh, it might not last uh, for long. All of the pressures are in the upward direction, both demographic and uh, technological. Uh, so. Why is health care so expensive in the United States? We uh, look around at other similarly advanced economies, and here we are spending almost 18% of our GDP uh, on health care. And uh, most of the advanced countries of uh, Western Europe, uh, who after all live reasonably well, um, spend about 12%. Uh, plus or minus a couple of percent, the Brits less, the Swiss more, but uh, it's uh, like 12 percent as com uh, compared to 18 percent. And guess what? They're healthier. Uh, and so one could jump to the conclusion that they're doing something in their health care system uh, that, uh, that we ought to be doing. Uh, part possibly because they have a single-payer system, uh, possibly because they organize uh, uh, their health care in a different way. But actually, that's probably not right. In fact, it's almost certainly not right. Um, the uh, differences uh, across uh, countries, or between us and these lower spending, healthier uh, uh, European countries uh, are mostly 
not in the way they deliver health care, which is actually, when you look at it, quite diverse. Uh, it's probably other things. Uh, they are leaner. They exercise more. Uh, they uh, ride more bicycles and do more walk working and stay, spend less time in their cars. Uh, they don't tolerate poverty the way we do uh, and dangerous neighborhoods. They're less violent. I'm not going to Virginia to get into an argument about gun control, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, we, we have a high, high rate of, uh, of violence uh, in, this, uh, in this country. Uh, and um, uh, we have uh, environmental hazards of, of uh, poor housing uh, that uh, are less, uh, less prevalent uh, in, in those countries. And uh, so it's not at all obvious that uh, what uh, uh, they are, the reason that they are healthier has to do with their uh, with the way they organize their health care. That said, we probably could learn a good deal from, U from uh, European systems about how to organize health care better, and we might be able to do it cheaper. If you look at what the differences are between us and them, uh, it's mostly <coughs> uh, the, the price of health care and the wages of health care professionals. Uh, we use a lot more specialists and fewer general practitioners and fewer nurse practitioners and midwives and community health workers and uh, other people uh, than uh, they do. And specialists are, because they're so specialized, uh, very expensive. Uh, and so if you want to be a uh, big time specialist, uh, stay here, uh, don't go to Europe, uh, but uh, unless you're in absolutely the right place. Uh, but um, uh, the, uh, the differences are partly that. They're not equipment, they used to be. We, we use quite a lot of fancy equipment, but they're getting there so too, so uh, they may use it a little more efficiently, but that's not the big, uh, the big uh, thing. Uh, and uh, the other is administrative cost. Uh, our exceedingly complex and fragmented health system uh, run, runs up a lot of administrative uh, costs. But uh, be that as it may, uh, we, uh, what, do, what do we do about it? Uh, we're, uh, uh, we're a pretty uh, expensive country. There's good evidence that uh, a lot of what we do in healthcare delivery uh, could, uh, <coughs> isn't necessarily uh, very uh, effective. There's a lot of duplicative testing and, and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, the Institute of Medicine has uh, a, uh, well, done well documented uh, studies uh, that say that uh, up to a third of our health care spending uh, it, uh, isn't therapeutic, doesn't do anybody uh, any good. Um, that may or may not be true. In any case, it, doesn't, it isn't obvious what you do about it. Uh, one person's waste is another person's income. Uh, and uh, if we're doing uh, multiple tests or prescribing too many drugs or whatever, uh, it uh, is uh, showing up in somebody's income and somebody's profit, and it's very difficult to know uh, how uh, to, uh, uh, to, to change that. Um, but um, suppose we did, um, and I'll come back to what we might do to make things better in healthcare, but let's just suppose that we were able to solve some of these problems, uh, get uh, a uh, less wasteful and more uh, efficient uh, system in which uh, the cost was, if not falling, at least not rising as fast. Um, and uh, it would be good if our uh, healthcare costs didn't rise faster than other costs. I mean. Uh, 
it, spending 17 to 18% of your GDP is bad enough, but we're kind of used to that. Uh, what we're not used to uh, is uh, going higher than that. Uh, but let me uh, just ask, uh, uh, take a parenthesis to say, why do we care? Uh, suppose we're not successful uh, in uh, uh, reining in the costs of health care. Um, suppose we have all of these new therapies coming online and people demanding them and our system doesn't get any more efficient uh, and uh, we go back to the trajectory that we were on a few years ago in which serious people thought look, we've gone from six to 18 uh, in a few uh, decades, and another decade or two at the rate we're going, uh, we may be spending our 20%, uh, 22%, 26%, maybe 30% uh, uh, getting up toward uh, uh, a third of our GDP on healthcare. Um, is that so terrible? Why should we care? Well, we should care because it's that we should care about the things we would not be doing if that happens to us. Uh, everybody who thinks seriously about the future of the U.S. economy, I think now thinks, we are not investing enough in the skills of our future workforce. Now, that doesn't count you guys, you're here. Uh, and you're presumably, I hope, uh, working hard and learning uh, skills uh, at uh, James Madison that will be useful in your future. But um, a lot of people aren't. And uh, many of the people you went to high school with are not. Uh, and a lot of people are learning things that actually aren't very useful. Uh, and so uh, one thing we are not doing is investing as heavily as we should be and as smart as we should be uh, in the skills of not just the future workforce, but the current workforce. Uh, I think everybody says, uh, you know, look at the roads. Uh, not the road I came down from Washington, which is terrific. Uh, but uh, most of the rest of the roads uh, around uh, this part of the country or any part of the country, uh, and particularly in cities, and particularly after a bad winter. Uh, our roads are in bad shape. Our bridges are not in very good shape. Our rail system isn't in very good shape. Our, uh, our broadband technology not nearly as good as an, or as pervasive as it could be. Uh, we need to be investing in a lot of things that will make us more productive in the future. Okay, if we do more health care, That'll have some effect, uh, but uh, it uh, will. Uh, but it will mostly be for people who are no longer in the workforce, uh, and it uh, is will take away uh, from the investment that we need uh, to uh, to grow the economy uh, faster. But back to my opposite hypothetical. Um, suppose we are able to uh, control uh, health care uh, costs um, so that we don't rise above 18 percent, maybe gradually as we, uh, and as the economy takes hold and starts growing faster again, we hope, uh, we level off at 17, maybe come down to 16. Uh, that would be, that would be nice. Would it make us healthier? Probably not. Uh, the, uh, and uh, nor would the uh, adoption of uh, all of these uh, fancy new therapies make most of us healthier. The thing we need to really focus on uh, are all the things that we know are uh, re seriously related to health that have nothing to do with health care. Uh, what you eat, how much you exercise, uh, are obvious things that you uh, know about. I co-chaired a uh, commission uh, called um, a Commission on a Healthier America. Who could who could refuse that? Uh, uh, which uh, actually we pulled together uh, twice. 
uh, to look at all the things that could be done to uh, make us uh, to make us healthier. Uh, and there's some really exciting things going on uh, in various parts of the country. And uh, we had a pretty long list in the first time uh, that we did a report. And the second time we decided we really should focus on the most important things that uh, we thought could be done. And uh, we looked at a lot of evidence and had a lot of interesting uh, sessions. And the three things that we came up with uh, that we thought were most important to emphasize were first, very early childhood education. Uh, the evidence that good health uh, starts uh, in the womb and very shortly thereafter and in the first uh, few years of life is quite overwhelming and it's not just physical health, it's mental health. Uh, and uh, it is not just associated with uh, good preschool, that too. Uh, but with really good nurturing in a nurturing environment for little kids. Uh, and if we can turn our attention, as many European countries have, uh, more uh, toward early, very early childhood, uh, we're likely to have a healthier population uh, uh, in, into the future. Um, the second thing that we focused on uh, was not healthier people, but healthier communities. And uh, that was based on a lot of uh, observation, uh, especially about low-income communities, both, both city and, uh, and uh, rural. Uh, that a lot of people uh, live in uh, neighborhoods where it's very hard to make healthy choices. Uh, we can uh, believe that people ought to take responsibility for their own health and their children's health, and they should, uh, but uh, there are many communities where it's very hard to uh, choose a healthy lifestyle, uh, either because there's no fresh food available anywhere near you uh, or at a price you can afford, uh, or because you don't want to get out and do your, uh, ride your bike or, uh, uh, or take a run because it's not safe to go out the front door uh, and uh, you don't want your children out there either and uh, the playground is hazardous or there isn't a playground if this is uh, uh, in, in, a rural, in a rural area, um, or because the housing that you live in is really is contaminated in some way or just uh, not, uh, 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 not a healthy place to live. Uh, and uh, so uh, the real emphasis that we thought was necessary was uh, getting the health planners, and we have a big public health establishment, and the community planners uh, where there's an opportunity to regenerate uh, a, a community, uh, d uh, talking to each other and working together. Uh, I think this may become a new profession. Uh, those of you who are thinking of long-term uh, careers, uh, it isn't yet. Uh, but if we had people who had training in public health and community planning, thinking seriously with city councils and mayors and uh, other folks uh, about how do we make this a healthier uh, community, uh, we'd uh, be better off. And then our third thing uh, is uh, to get the health uh, uh, clinicians and other health professionals uh, more focused on health. Now that sounds kind of silly, isn't health their job? Well, not necessarily. Uh, the system isn't organized so that uh, your doctor uh, can take time 
to talk to you about how uh, you uh, need to be getting more exercise or you need to be eating differently and actually help you understand what you need to be doing. Uh, furthermore, you don't want your doctor doing that. Uh, doctors are highly paid. You want him knowing about it <laughs> but, uh, and thinking it's important, uh, which often they don't. Uh, but you don't want him spending a lot of time with you over uh, 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 what your exercise regime should be or uh, how uh, to, uh, uh, what, what your, exactly your, your diet ought to be or how to, how to improve it. Uh, you want somebody who specialized in that and can take a little time and talk it through with you and get you into some group that's focused on that. Uh, and uh, some parts of our health establishment are doing that, uh, but, uh, but not, uh, not nearly enough. So uh, come back to my uh, things we ought to be avoiding if we're thinking seriously, uh, sticking with health care for the moment, about how to have, how to improve health care uh, at a sustainable cost. Uh, first, we ought to avoid thinking that there is some, uh, uh, some one thing uh, that uh, will do this. And I'm uh, surprised often, uh, I talk to a lot of people uh, uh, who are not healthcare professionals but who have ideas about it, and you'd be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, how many people think there is some one thing uh, that if we just did it, uh, we, it would account for the rising cost of health care. Uh, one of the favorites is tort reform and malpractice insurance. Now, uh, and anybody who uh, has, uh, is in a, a set of specialties, gynecology, uh, neurosurgery, uh, things where if you make a mistake, it's really awful, uh, knows that the malpractice insurance is very expensive and judgments are sometimes uh, very high. So uh, it, the, the uh, conclusion has come into the common thinking that if we just had tort reform, and I think we should, uh, the uh, uh, costs would come tumbling down. Actually not when you look at it. The number of specialties for which the malpractice insurance is very high uh, is small. Uh, the judgments, though, so the ones that make the papers are, uh, are very high uh, are actually not all that high. Uh, there are things we could do to reform that, uh, that system. Uh, and I think quite sensible things. Uh, it, if um, we had good recognized, adopted guidelines for what's the right thing to do uh, in a particular situation, and the medical profession is getting more and more of those, and uh, the doctor who had made the alleged mistake had followed the guidelines, uh, then he should have what the lawyers call a safe harbor, uh, to, and that would uh, uh, reduce uh, some of the um, extra high um, judgments. But the, my point is not that. My point is that's not going to make a lot of difference. It's like 1% of the cost of health care. Uh, uh, another one which also has a good deal of merit uh, is uh, so much of the cost of health care is in the last year of life. Uh, if we could just uh, get uh, uh, those uh, 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 die with dignity in a less medically intensive place, which is what most old people want anyway, uh, it uh, would uh, save a lot of money. That's partly true. Uh, and all of these uh, one solution things have some merit, uh, but uh, it is uh, not a, uh, uh, it's, it's not a magic bullet. Uh, in the first place, you don't know when the last year of life is. Uh, and uh, in uh, the case of um, 
you know, things certainly like traumatic accidents, uh, we're now learning that lots of things can be done uh, that couldn't be done uh, before. Uh, and um, uh, this is not to say that um, we shouldn't have much more sensible guidelines uh, about uh, the end of life when it's clear that the end of life is near. And uh, there, I think the older population itself, not well represented in this room, uh, it, uh, can, uh, can take charge and say, I don't want to die in a place w in a hospital with a lot of tubes in my nose. Uh, I want to die at home or in a hospice. And that kind of movement is taking hold, but not going to change, uh, change the world. Uh, and there are several other, uh, I'll just give one more. Uh, if you're in a group of, uh, of liberals and especially sort of liberal Democrats, somebody will say, uh, if we just had a single payer system, uh, then all these problems would go away. I don't know where that notion came from. Uh, this, uh, there are arguments for a single payer system. Medicare is a single payer system, by the way. Uh, and the problem is that the single payer still has to make decisions about what to pay for and how much to pay for it. Having a single payer doesn't give you any magic uh, at all. Um, I was in France uh, in uh, not this last election, but the one before uh, when uh, Sarkozy was running. And uh, they have a system where, uh, they do have a single payer system and they uh, have a board of experts uh, that uh, says when the costs are getting, are rising too fast. And then the uh, medical establishment uh, has to respond. And I thought, that's interesting. What are they going to do? Well, guess what? They were talking about all the same things we talk about. Higher pay, uh, hi higher co-pays, uh, more gatekeepers to make sure that uh, <coughs> you really need to see the specialist. Uh, it wasn't a simple problem at all. It was the same problem. Uh, just uh, one that uh, happened to be taking place in full public view uh, in a uh, in a single payer system. Um, and uh, my my other uh, thing that uh, I think we should not be doing is pretending that there are ideological solutions that work. Uh, what you hear most uh, often uh, in the political world that I wander around in Washington is uh, first um, the, uh, the single payer idea uh, from, uh, from very liberal Democrats or uh, the, uh, the notion that regulation can solve our problems and some regulation can help. Uh, on uh, the other side are arrayed people who say, uh, we just need to have the market take over and people make choices and if people were shopping for health care the way they shop for refrigerators, uh, they would make much better decisions and our problems uh, would be solved because they would look at what is the uh, best refrigerator for the price and, uh, and uh, buy it uh, and competition uh, would work. Um, you don't hear people talking about that in very specific ways because actually when you think about it, it doesn't work. Uh, it's very important for patients to have good information about what is available to them and what it uh, might cost. But if you're really sick, uh, you're actually not making a choice. Your doctor is. Uh, and you go uh, and, and all of the the expensive part of medical care is concentrated in that uh, uh, in, uh, high cost end of uh, the, uh, of the um, spending uh, spectrum. So if you've had a heart attack or you have cancer or you have something else, you basically can't shop very well. Uh, you're in some kind of a healthcare um, establishment 
and you do what their protocols are. Uh, and uh, you actually are quite glad that you're not making the decision uh, about uh, exactly uh, what to do. What can work, or at least what we are experimenting with in the United States, is uh, not shopping for health care at the point of delivery, but shopping for a health plan uh, that where you know uh, what uh, the terms of the plan are, or you can find out, uh, and um, you uh, can uh, compare it with others. You know which systems are, uh, which health systems are in one plan or another. Uh, that is exactly uh, the kind of competition that we are experimenting with in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's going to work. Uh, the uh, exchanges, nobody should have, should have any um, uh, good words to say about uh, the... Uh, uh, way the uh, uh, exchanges got started, and it wasn't just the federal exchange, it was several states that actually had experience with running uh, uh, exchanges and didn't do a very good job, uh, but uh, some did. Uh, but, um, and anybody who knew, had uh, been around uh, in the uh, implementation of a big new technology system like this in either the private or the public sector knew that it never, was gonna, never works the first time. You have to try, uh, uh, try it out uh, and uh, uh, get the glitches out and try again. Uh, but uh, the technology uh, aside, uh, we do seem to be uh, seeing uh, a set of um, uh, competitive uh, markets, uh, the uh, competition among insurance plans uh, that can work. Uh, now, it's going to take a little while. The people who were signed up for a particular plan may find out, oops, my plan uh, has higher premiums. I've got to look for another one. That's very annoying, but it's the way markets work. Uh, it might happen to you if you're shopping for something uh, else uh, as, uh, as well. The companies that offer plans hadn't done this before. Uh, they had to figure out, how do I price this? Uh, exactly what do I say uh, my premiums are going to be? So there's a lot of experimentation that goes on in any market, and that's, uh, that's what we're uh, seeing in the Affordable Care Act, but it's done a remarkable thing. Uh, the Affordable Care Act has gotten insurance companies competing on the right stuff. Uh, before this law, insurance companies competed on whether they were clever enough to pick out uh, the healthiest people and not serve the people who had pre-existing conditions or extra high health bills, uh, get rid of them because they're expensive. Uh, and the competition was really between the risk adjusters. Uh, now we have insurance companies actually trying uh, and I think eventually uh, succeeding to compete on the things they ought to be competing on, namely, what services are we offering, who's in our network, uh, and what is the cost? And it turns out people really care about the cost, and they really are choosing the lower premium plans uh, in uh, a lot of places which may mean they're choosing quite narrow networks. They don't have as much choice, uh, but, and uh, maybe in the end they won't like that, uh, but it does seem to be what you'd expect in competition. But that's just starting. The other place where we did competition uh, was in Medicare Part D. And everybody said, oh, it's not gonna work. 
old people can't make decisions, it's too complicated, they won't uh, be able to choose. Well, old people aren't so dumb, and uh, uh, they also have children and grandchildren and advisors and whatnot, uh, and it turns out they're pretty well able to choose, and uh, that the costs of uh, these drug plans have come in, in uh, after several years considerably below what all the experts said they would. So competition, when well managed, uh, does, uh, does work. Um, I think I'll leave it there because I've talked too long and I don't want to, I want to leave a few, uh, a little time for uh, questions. But uh, my, my uh, bottom line here is uh, this is a set of solvable problems. They're not going to go away in your lifetime, no matter how young you are. Uh, and uh, if we adopt a sensible view of we can solve this, uh, but there's no easy way, and we keep at it uh, for a good long time, then I think we can have both uh, better health and better health care uh, for uh, sustainable costs. Thank you.